it's going very quickly. Then uh, it should be approximately like that. We we will have 15 minutes just to just to finish the, the, the conference. Then it will be the short presentation of the of the videos, very short, some minutes, and then immediately we'll start the discussion. Okay. Okay. Yes. Let's start. So. Donc, euh, revenons à Kendall Walton. <rire> puisque, so donc, let's go back to Kendall Walton. Puisqu'il a donc aidé à, à clarifier l'idée de mimesis en expliquant que c'est surtout un, un processus mental du spectateur qui a besoin d'un support pour imaginer. Uh, this person uh, actually uh, helped uh, explain the mimesis and said that uh, it's actually a process that pertains to the spectator who has to imagine things in order to understand what's going on on the stage. Mm. Mais cependant, euh, dans son ouvrage qui est très, qui est très dense, euh, Kendall Walton examine aussi l'autre aspect de la mimesis, c'est-à-dire la relation entre cet objet et le monde. And uh, in his work, uh, Kendall Walton also explains the relationship between the object and the world. Et donc, il distingue deux types de représentations. Une uh, représentation qu'il appelle correcte, uh, qui matches, qui touche l'objet hein, de la, uh, qui est en relation exacte. And he makes the difference or the distinction between two types of representation. A representation which uh, he calls is correct. Yes, uh, which matches, uh, a matching representation. Et ce qu'il appelle aussi une misrepresenting uh, representation. Et une représentation fausse. Voilà. Mais, comme il l'écrit, et c'est directement en anglais, alors vous allez traduire en français peut-être Representing without mas matching is simply misrepresentation. But misrepresenting is representing nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> representing without matching is simply misrepresentation, but misrepresenting is representing nonetheless. Oui, French. mais et donc en français <laughs> maintenant, en français, into French. Uh, donc représenter. Représentant. Voilà sans refléter ce qui se passe, est simplement une fausse euh, représentation, mais euh, une représentation fausse est une représentation quand même. Voilà, exactement. C'est une représentation quand même. Et effectivement, la marionnette est souvent une représentation fausse. And uh, more often than not, a puppet is a, a misrepresentation of reality. Par exemple, euh, surtout si l'on tient le compte que euh, une marionnette représente un personnage, mais aussi euh, une catégorie d'êtres vivants. Par exemple, ici, une femme. Uh, a puppet always uh, represents uh, a character, but also uh, represents uh, a way of being. In this case, it's a woman. Voilà. Et, et là, effectivement, c'est une mauvaise représentation. And of course, Bien this sûr. is a misrepresentation <laughs> of reality. Voilà. Et, et donc, euh, il me semble que nous pouvons prendre appui sur euh, le petit livre d'Ernst Gombrich, enfin, il sait, d'Ernst Gombrich, Meditations on a Hobby Horse, Méditation sur un cheval de bois. Now we are going to um, focus on another work, which is... Uh, Ernst Gombrich. Ernst Gombrich, Meditation on a Hobby Horse. Et, et donc Ernst Gombrich dit, voilà, l'image ne sera plus la copie de la forme extérieure d'un objet, mais l'imitation de certains de ses aspects significatifs. What does Gombrich say? He says uh, the image uh, will not be a copy of uh, the external form anymore, the external form of an object, but the imitation of certain significant aspects. Voilà, par exemple. For instance. Voilà, Obios, un cheval de bois n'a pas besoin de ressembler à un cheval 
Euh, N'importe quel bâton, même sans tête, peut servir de cheval de bois à un enfant dans son jeu. For instance, a hobby horse, and uh, here uh, the horse doesn't necessarily need to be represented by a form which is a horse, even a stick or a rod can be a horse for a child who plays. Donc, euh, je donnerai un ou deux exemples de ces misrepresentations euh, encore. Euh, Two more examples of this uh, misrepresentation. Voilà, par exemple, euh, effectivement, euh, la marionnette qui n'est constituée que d'une tête et d'un bras. For instance, in this case, the puppet is represented just by its head. Voilà, tête et bras, ou chez Frank Zenle aussi, c'est très habituel, bien sûr, d'avoir euh, ces représentations partielles hein, d'un corps. With uh, the work of Frank Zenle, it's um, custom for him to represent uh, the objects like that. Je, voilà, just with one head and on, on one arm. Et peut-être encore une dernière fois, un peu plus, encore. And Dernier exemple, voilà. Euh, and the last example. Euh, on ne peut pas dire que le marteau imite le capitaine Bordure dans Uburois. Donc effectivement, euh, il n'est qu'un support pour l'imagination et un support très éloigné de la représentation d'un homme. And in uh, this case, the hammer is uh, just a prop, but it represents the evil. Uh, Captain Bordur, it's uh, the character. Captain name of the Bordur, character. it's a character. Of Uberoi, uh, we can say that it represents, it represents it, it's just a prop for the imagination. And the prop, which qui ne, ressemble, ne ressemble pas à un être humain. Voilà, c'est un, il ne ressemble pas à un être humain. In uh, this uh, play, uh, King, Uh, the objects uh, do not look like humans, and uh, the hammer is something evil. Je reprends seulement cette référence au modèle à la copie par Gombrich. I will go back to this uh, model, this copy by Gombrich. Oui, c'est ça. Et dans, oui, c'est ça. C'est bien. Non, non, c'est bien. Et dans un essai euh, pour ces successives. Ah non, c'est le tien, ça. Oui, c'est le tien. Ah, Excusez-moi. Avance. 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 Voilà, dans, ok, là, c'est juste pour donner la référence. Dans Art, Perception, Réalité, 1973, euh, il pose la question d'un autre point, mais que je crois très, je, je trouve très intéressant. C'est-à-dire que la question de la représentation dans l'art par rapport à un original qui serait vrai se pose comme une fausse question. Euh, en synthèse, on peut dire que euh, le portrait s'il s'agit d'une œuvre d'art, d'une vraie œuvre d'art, n'est jamais la copie d'un modèle. Il lui est supérieur dans la capacité d'exprimer l'essence du sujet représenté. Donc, ça complique encore euh, les choses. Les choses. So, uh, the work of art is never just a, a copy of uh, the original. It's something superior to the original. Tu vas continuer avec le oui. droit de fond Oui, oui, tout à fait. Euh, passons. Et dernière, bon, dernier point. Donc, euh, encore, On avance. Avance, avance. avance. Bon. Hop, 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 hop. Voilà. <rire> hop. Merci. Voilà, dernière, euh, dernière idée euh, assez simple. Euh, la marionnette, donc, effectivement, est une représentation partiel et euh, presque une volontairement on pourrait dire une fausse représentation une misrepresentation uh, and uh, the last idea is that uh, 
a puppet is only a partial representation or we can say that it is a misrepresentation. Oui, ça, ça c'était l'avant-dernière idée, donc la dernière maintenant, <laughs> je résumais. Euh, la dernière, c'est que la marionnette, le théâtre de marionnettes contemporain voit aussi euh, la mise en relation entre le personnage et un arrière-plan, un fond. In the contemporary puppet theater, they establish a relationship between the character and the background, or the voilà. puppet and the background. Voilà, c'est euh, ce fond, euh, qui est peut-être un fond imaginaire, hein, que Rilke appelle la mélodie des choses. Uh, this background can be just an imaginary background that expresses uh, the melody of things. Voilà, peut-être on peut juste apprendre cette citation de, de Rilke. La suivante. And voilà. I chose this quote from Rilke. S'il n'y a pas une grande souffrance qui rend les hommes égaux dans le silence, l'un perçoit davantage, l'autre moins, la puissante mélodie de l'arrière-plan. Beaucoup ne l'entendent absolument plus. Ils sont comme des arbres, oublieux de leurs racines, ils pensent que leur vie et leur force résident dans le frémissement de leurs branches. If there is a no uh, great pain or suffering that makes uh, humans be equal in silence, one of them perceives more than the other, the other less uh, the strong melody of the background. Il y a, uh, there are a lot of people who cannot hear anything. They are just like oblivious uh, trees that have forgotten their roots. They think that uh, their life, their life uh, and their force resides in um, the branches of the tree. Yes. Um, C'est-à-dire, donc... Uh, um L'idée ici, c'est que euh, cet arrière-plan qui, par exemple, unit la marionnette avec d'autres objets, qui, qui fait que nous sommes dans un environnement plastique euh, cohérent. So Et this background that uh, unites uh, the puppet with the other objects present there. Oui. Euh, donc, qui est très important à cause de la dimension plastique du théâtre de marionnettes aujourd'hui. And this is quite important because of the plastic nature or character of uh, today's puppet theater. Or visual character of puppet theater. As a visual art. Euh, cela, effectivement, euh, permet aussi de construire une euh, représentation euh, à la qui soit qui rendent les spectateurs égaux entre eux. Ils sont And this enables, uh, this enables uh, the construction uh, of uh, an environment that makes the spectators uh, be equal among them. Yes, equal among them. C'est-à-dire qu'ils perçoivent peut-être la même sensibilité. Hein? Je... Voilà. C'est juste une hypothèse. But it's just an assumption, a hypothesis. Euh, oui, je confirme que ce n'est pas une hypothèse parce que Rilke, dans d'autres essais, parle d'une communauté de spectateurs. Uh, yes, I would like to confirm what my colleague said because Rilke, in his work, is talking about a, of a community of people. Et il admire la dramaturgie de Materlinck parce qu'il crée des figures marionnettes qui ont un sentiment universel, c'est-à-dire qui tout le monde peut comprendre. And he admires uh, the work of Metterling because uh, Metterling creates uh, puppets and uh, objects that uh, convey a universal feeling uh, everybody can share. Um, uh, J'avais, je vous dis seulement quelque chose dont je ne vais pas parler, c'est-à-dire la référence que j'avais annoncée à Francis Bacon et à Deleuze. Uh, I will talk about the references that I make, made to Francis Bacon and Deleuze. Okay. Okay. 
juste, juste une image, parce que si vous connaissez ce, euh, cet essai logique de la sensation de Deleuze qui euh, traite le, le, la peinture de Bacon, I don't know if you are aware, you are informed about this work that uh, talks about uh, the work of Francis Bacon, the painting of Francis Bacon. Mais on peut y retrouver une quantité de motifs très intéressants par rapport à une figure défigurée ou une figure qui défigure la présence. Uh, it's quite interesting because you can find there a whole number of uh, motives that uh, makes you think of a disfigured figure. Et dans cet essai, on parle aussi de la couleur comme fond. Uh, the essay also treats uh, the idea of color and the background. Donc, ce, ce qui uh, peut ressembler à un fragment, quelque chose d'extrait eh, d'une représentation de la réalité. Uh, which can uh, look like uh, an excerpt, a piece of reality, cut out from reality. Reçoit son pouvoir d'expression, son pouvoir expressif de ce fond coloré. And uh, this is the power of expression of this colored background. Et c'est là que je vais revenir à, à la uh, mélodie des choses, donc ce motif dont Didier... Uh, And now uh, I'll go back to the melody of things that Didier mentioned. Uh, oui, c'est encore avant, excusez-moi. Avant Encore oui, c'est ça. Et euh, Eric, c'est un auteur que <laughs> dont je m'occupe depuis beaucoup d'années. Et well, uh, Eric est un writer that uh, I have been studying for many years. Et je crois qu'il est très intéressant <coughs> par rapport au discours sur la marionnette. And in what concerns the discourse about puppetry and uh, puppets. So et il n'est pas étudié parce que ça a un rapport avec sa production de la jeunesse. This is related to his production or his work as a young man. Um, il, il écrit que... Um, uh, non, on va... Pardon. Excusez-moi, mais je vois comment... Non, avant. Ça <coughs> Là. C'est d'accord, non Après. 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 Là. Ok. Ça, c'est une citation pour moi, un passage pour moi très important. C'est-à-dire que dans le contexte de cette mélodie des choses, il parle vraiment, et vous pouvez le lire, comme si dans la liste de personnages, on trouvait une armoire, un verre, un bruit, tout ce qui, qui est plus subtil et plus discret encore. Dans la vie, tout a la même valeur, valeur et une chose vaut bien un mot, une odeur ou un rêve. In this context of the music of things or melody of things, he talks about things like what you see on the screen. It's like uh, on the list of characters, we would find a sideboard, a glass, uh, uh, we would hear a noise, and uh, all of this uh, is more subtle and even more discreet. In life, everything has the, main, the same value, uh, and uh, one thing is equal to a word, a smell, or a dream. Donc, à la fin du 19e siècle, Rilke pense déjà au, au, au son, à tous les présences scéniques comme des présences dramaturgiques. Uh, even in his time, uh, Rilke already uh, thinks about the sounds, how they are uh, reflected and uh, their value in playwriting. Et un autre motif qu'on retrouve dans les, les, la réflexion de Rilke qui nous re, fait revenir à la marionnette, c'est le motif de l'effacement du visage. 
And uh, one other motive that we find in Rilke's work is the blurring of the face. Il en parle en relation à Eleonora Duse, par exemple, la grande actrice. He talks about the relationship with Eleonora Duse. Il la décrit toujours quand elle se cache le visage avec un bouquet de fleurs, avec les mains, avec les cheveux. Uh, he said that uh, Eleonora Duse always uh, hid her face behind a bunch of flowers uh, or something else like that. Et ça doit être mis en rapport au texte de Rilke où il met en évidence la potentialité expressive du corps par rapport au visage. And uh, this relates to what Rilke said in uh, his work uh, where he, he emphasized the power of expression of the body. Et j'ai trouvé extraordinaire que quand il écrit sur la sculpture de Rodin and uh, what is extraordinary to me is that uh, when he wrote about uh, Rodin's sculpture, il revient sur la douze et donc sur, sur l'interprétation d'une actrice. Uh, he goes back to Eleon Eleonora Duse, that is uh, the representation of an actress. On ne va pas lire toute la citation, mais uh, il souligne le fait que le bras manque. Donc c'est un corps qui n'est pas réalistique, mais qui, qui exprime l'essence du corps. Uh, he uh, underlines the fact that uh, the arm is missing, which of course uh, was not true uh, in reality, but uh, this uh, has a great power of expression. Um, encore avant, une autre citation, après, oui. Et dans le même uh, essai sur Rodin, uh, je lis seulement une partie de, du passage, euh, on s'est très vite habitué à cette impression. On a appris qu'un tout artistique ne doit, ne doit pas nécessairement coïncider avec les tout habituels qui forment l'objet, qu'à l'intérieur du tableau se forment des nouvelles convergences détachées de toute dépendance, des nouveaux accords, des nouveaux rapports équilibres. Well, where is that on the screen? Souligné. C'est souligné. Uh, uh, in uh, the same work of uh, uh, Rilke, he wrote about uh, the sculptures of Rodin. He said uh, that um, uh, an artistic whole doesn't necessarily have to co coincide uh, with uh, the, the, ordinary, the, the ordinary whole that forms an object, uh, and that uh, inside a painting or a picture, new convergences uh, are formed that are detached of any dependence, uh, new accords are formed, as well as uh, new relationships and balances or equilibriums. Donc c'est à l'artiste de faire une chose de plusieurs et de créer un monde de plus petits fragments d'une chose, du fragment euh, Un faire un, un organisme, un and uh, it's the duty of the artist uh, to create uh, uh, something, a thing, from uh, uh, several things and create a world uh, using uh, little fragments of a thing. Et la dernière citation, oui. <laughs> and the last <laughs> quote. <laughs> Je trouve très intéressant par rapport uh, à la Marie. Uh, Au rapport entre marionnettiste et marionnette, une main qui se pose sur une autre épaule ou sur une autre cuisse n'appartient plus entièrement au corps d'où elle est venue. And uh, the last quote, uh, which is quite interesting because it establishes the relationship between the object and the puppeteer, uh, the object uh, that uh, the hand touches uh, gives birth to a new thing, a thing that has no name uh, anymore and uh, that doesn't belong to anyone. Uh, oui. Vous avez lu plus, mais ça va. <laughs> Donc, c'est-à-dire que de ce nouvel rapport entre le corps et l'objet est né quelque chose de nouveau qui, uh, même si est, uh, apparemment ou selon les lois de la réalité détachée d'un tout, a sa propre euh, organicité et sa propre euh, ar harmonie ou mélodie des choses parce que ça vient aussi du discours de la toile de fond. And the et idea is that from this relationship between the object and the, the body, a new thing 
is born and this new thing has uh, its uh, own harmony and its own music. Peut-être juste pour conclure. Oui. Juste pour conclure sur ce fragment. Donc simplement, on peut dire que la marionnette effectivement fait plus que l'acteur ici. Uh, one can say, uh, just to finish my presentation, we can say that uh, the puppet uh, does a lot more than the performer does. Puisque effectivement, étant un objet matériel, elle peut appartenir au même monde que l'univers scénique qui l'entoure. Elle, elle est une partie prenante de, de ce monde. Et donc, l'effet de profondeur, l'effet de mélodie des choses que, dont parle Rilke, il est évidemment là beaucoup plus facile. <laughs> Uh, the idea is that uh, since the object is a material object, it belongs uh, to the world that surrounds it. It can identify itself with the world around and uh, takes something from the background. Oui, et je souligne seulement ce, ce motif des relations dont on était parti et qui est revenu pendant ces It's journées. the motive of uh, the relationships between uh, the object, the body, the puppeteer. Et bon, merci, on dit ça encore. <rire> merci. merci. Uh, uh, thank you for your attention. On va peut-être reprendre seulement des extraits vidéo qu'on n'a pas montré. Quelqu'un a demandé ça. I just want to show you two little video, very short videos that I haven't uh, shown you before. Le premier, c'est un spectacle de Danio Manfredini. The first shows you a show by Danio Manfredini, a performance by Danio Manfredini. Al presente, c'est le titre. Al presente is the title of this show. C'est un artiste qui s'inspire beaucoup de Beckett et de Bacon. He is a performer that uh, takes a lot of inspiration from Beckett and Bacon. Et ça avait relation avec uh, un morceau de notre relation qu'on a coupé, qui c'était sur le double hyperréaliste. Le double hyperréaliste. Uh, this shows the relationship between the dual or the double hyperrealism. Et aussi avec le motif de l'inertie que Didier Plassard avait mentionné au début de l'intervention. Donc euh, la potentialité d'une euh, marionnette, d'une un, présence immobile. And this in conjunction with the, the motive of inertia gives us the idea of a puppet that is uh, motionless. Oui, oui, c'est déjà là, mais c'est immobile. <laughs> c'est vivant. Uh, it's there, but it doesn't move. passer l'autre extrait c'est le même spectacle the other fragment from the main, uh, same show le spectacle a été créé après une expérience dans un hôpital psychiatrique donc c'est évident de le faire avec un espace clos 
This uh, show was created based on an, the experience from a psychiatric institution. La voix est off, donc il y a un ultérieur redoublement de, de présence. L'autre extrait, c'est encore de la compagnie Teatrino Giullare, qu'on a vu auparavant, et c'était à propos de, euh, le, du rôle de marionnettiste, acteur, narrateur. C'est un spectacle très dur euh, euh, de d'un texte de Elfried Yelinek, Les amants, qui parle de l'illusion de l'amour et de, de, de la chute de cet idéal. Uh, the other piece uh, shows you the importance of the role played by the performer narrator and gives you and speaks about the illusion of love. Uh, je, euh, je l'avais choisi parce que l'actrice est là aussi en même temps actrice, euh, narratrice, manipulatrice. Et le, le texte euh, est celui de narrateur, mais il s'adresse aussi à la, à la poupée en même temps. Donc il y a vraiment une coprésence des rôles. Euh, And I selected this performer because she plays the role of a performer and uh, the role of a narrator, and uh, the same time the role of a puppeteer. Uh, she manipulates the puppet. She has to read the text of a uh, uh, narrator, <laughs> but at the same time she addresses herself to the puppet. Okay, 
Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Christina Grazioli. Thank you, Didier Passard. Uh, it's, uh, it's time to start our discussion, which should be a little bit longer, shorter. It's up to us. Maybe I will start with uh, one, uh, one, two reflections. Well, first, what is coming to my, to my mind is that probably we, the puppeteers, in all meanings of this, of this term, well, the last milieu of the people of the art who can meet together, it means the practitioners, uh, historians, critics, pedagogues, um, theoreticians, and so on. That is so rarely in the world of the art today. Thank you to all the participants of the conference. Thank you to the puppetry art. Then we can still do this kind of meetings. It's really very hard. Second uh, reflection, which is nothing with the with the uh, team subject of the of the conference, but uh, it is as well, I think, very important for the contemporary time. In many countries, maybe in all countries, we are representing here. We have some opinions that puppetry art is something not so important, less, uh, less important, not uh, belongs to the high uh, level of the theater. And uh, I think that even, because uh, Christina is coming from uh, Padua, from the University of Padua, and, uh, and Didier from Montpellier, from the university, there are no the, uh, faculty or department of the of the puppeteers, even there there are not the faculty of the how can I say it theater knowledge for the for the puppetry art something like that never exists in uh, no country anywhere, but that is something extremely important that we have today in many countries in many uh, at many universities. We have the researchers, we have the professors who are so hardly interested by the puppetry art, who started many years ago to think about this art and put this art to the level of the, of the theater, general theater uh, thinking. Thanks to them, we, the puppeteers, I think, more and more, were still on the higher level of the competences, of the presence in the contemporary thinking about the theater. Of course, for us, for the puppeteers, probably the presence of the puppet, the relationships between the puppet, uh, puppet animator, um, are more important, more interesting. Of course, it's not, uh, it's not evident for everyone, for all our colleagues from other kind of the theater art. But that is something, in my opinion, something new. New it's, uh, doesn't mean it's, uh, it's that started today or started one or two years ago, but it is something absolutely new, uh, what was impossible to imagine even during the, the decades before. That is something very great, and that is something which uh, we can receive today. However, from another side, this conference was not easy. And for sure, for many of us, it was a little bit too difficult to understand all the elements of this presentation. Doesn't matter. You know, because that is the reason to make, to do the art, to do the, the science. To start from something and step by step to go a little bit higher, higher and higher. Then uh, I would like, personally, I'd like to thank very much to, to uh, Christine and to Didier for that, because for me it was a very important lesson, even not completely clear. 
after this short uh, introduction, I would like to invite you <laughs> to the discussion because there are, as well, there are many points which are... Well, the, another problem which is very evident for us then the, 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 the examples uh, they presented to us are maybe not so evident for everyone. For example, for me, this company, Italian company, these two, two artists, this uh, Teatro Gra uh, uh, Giullare. Giullare. Giullare and uh, this artist are completely unknown. I have, I have heard for the first time something like that. Of course, we can find in many other countries some artists connected to the puppetry art, connected uh, to the fine arts, different kind of arts with the, we, which are doing very different inc incredible experiments. But this kind of art is at n uh, are not so, so known for everybody because it's very rarely then uh, they partici participate in the, in the conference, in the um, uh, festivals, in some uh, presentations, uh, a little bit commercial, uh, with, uh, which are everywhere. Well, it's enough. Uh, please, I'm starting the discussion. Who would like to take a, take a, take a voice? We have some minutes. We are not in the bad situation. Anna Helgesen from Norway. Well, it's, it's two things that I found interesting, but also uh, confusing. <laughs> uh, first is the use of uh, uh, mimesis and the sort of negative feelings about mimesis that you even put the cross uh, over it and then you go on speaking on mimesis. So I, I just wonder, is it the, the realistic uh, art uh, sort of definition of uh, mimesis that you regret, and or is it the... No, 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 please. It was maybe a misunderstanding. Um, cross was, again, was above Plato and Aristoteles. I was just saying, I am using other definition of mimesis than the classical ones. It's just that. It's okay. not uh, it's not a judgment about aesthetics or, or not. I like very much uh, realism. <laughs> <laughs> and hyperrealism too. So n don't be afraid of, from this. Uh, <laughs> I'm not afraid. Crust. I just want it to be clear because when yes. you use mimesis in another way, what's your definition of mimesis? No, my definition was uh, one I um, tried to present one of Kendall Walton in, in this book, Mimesis as Make Believe, S um, saying that um, a mimesis uh, is, a, of course, a complex phenomenon, but its, its roots are in the spectator, not in the performer object, etc. Because sometimes... Uh, what produces a mimesis or mimetic effect is something that has, that has, that is an object, huh? like a hammer. <laughs> you cannot say that a hammer represents. It doesn't do anything, a hammer. It's an object. It doesn't represent Captain Bordure. It's just a, a prop. Yes. Uh, it's just oh, okay. what, we knew, yeah. what we need to imagine. Yes, and then I, I, I would say, as a, a both an artist and a, a researcher, that yes, it's, it, I, I like it very much. I like the idea of misrepresentation, but it cannot be a misrepresentation if you haven't done some sort of representation. We cannot uh, do a, imagine something if it's not some sort of the old mimesis thing, and that's... But I find it very, very nice. I haven't heard this misrepresentation. I, I like it very much. But, uh, but I think that was when we were really regretting uh, everything that could connect to the real world. What is happening now is that we connect, but we misrepresentate. So it's representation and misrepresentation, I, I think. That's my point. <laughs> Uh, I, I quoted this second uh, uh, quotation from Gombrich, uh, where he said that even if uh, 
a picture, it's very similar to the model. It says something more, that is the stress of, is on the artistic representation. Uh, mimesis is something uh, that has invention and creation in itself. It's the other side of the question. One more thing about, uh, um, about uh, misrepresenting. It, it, this, uh, this expression for me was important because we all see that contemporary puppetry is always misrepresenting. They are not uh, actors in miniature uh, as they were in the 19th century, or at the end of the 19th century. Puppets are incredible um, sculpture, uh, incredible beings with uh, deformed, uh, deformed uh, uh, bodies and heads, or we, we always see the materials from which they are made. They're, it's very rare to have a, uh, a puppet who, who, which could be called an actor in miniature, or miniaturized actor. It's, it's more, much more than that. It's um, almost always voluntarily misrepresenting man or woman. Uh, yes, and I, I, I think it's uh, interesting, and uh, I get some association because I'm a Norwegian and uh, I have I know my Ibsen, uh, and when he came to the point of the his realistic place, he starts to to put in uh, old Norwegian mythology. Uh, he was not a believer himself, so he had to to put God away. But he found that we find, need this mysterious things, so he connect to, to old myths of, of Norwegian uh, folk uh, uh, beliefs. And that that's make it mysterious and it make it uh, uh, connected to, to something that is also misinterpretation, I think, in a way. And uh, I think also what happened to the, uh, to the puppet was that for a while we had the deconstruction and the puppet were teared apart. And now we are allowed to build it together, but we don't build it as a, a realistic body anymore. Uh, so we have a certain freedom. But I think it's like it is, when it's not uh, realistic, we get uh, new beliefs, it's new myths uh, coming here. Thank you. Yeah. George Bernard Show. Uh, I I'm, don't know um, exactly b form, but said uh, a puppet is a ABC for an actor. And I think, why? Not for mimesis, I'm sure, but I'm think, uh, uh, I, I think uh, a puppet is a secret issue to, uh, between rigor and metaphor uh, to produce catharsis. Uh, I think this, what do you think? <laughs> Little question. <laughs> Your floor. <laughs> but, but you know that catharsis is merely an hypothesis. It's Aristoteles' hypothesis. Plato says exactly the contrary. Uh, Plato says that uh, if you see someone. Uh, on stage, weeping uh, uh, and suffering, uh, you suffer much more and you weep much more. Therefore, you have to uh, to chase all the artists on the stage <laughs> and not the actors. This is what Plato says in the Republic. And Aristoteles uh, um, 
theory of catharsis is a, an answer to Plato. But uh, who is right, Plato or Aristoteles? <laughs> and I would add that it's very difficult to imagine that, uh, well, on each representation of a Greek tragedy with, uh, well, say, uh, 10,000 people uh, uh, seeing the same performance, these 10,000 people went out and were all uh, relieved from <laughs> greed, suffering, and, and so on. But they all felt uh, catharsis. I am very, very doubtful of that. <laughs> it's not to avoid the, to answer, but I think that it all depends on the context. It could be catharsis. It's the same debate like uh, violence in the TV. Does it produce vi more violence in the society or less? Who knows? <laughs> Who can decide it? I think uh, the answer is different uh, for each spectator. For Rilke, catharsis is in the thing, in the <laughs> very material reality. <laughs> Even if he, he looks... <laughs> Some other questions, reflections, <laughs> notes. Well, but it's, it's like that, you know, it's the only one possibility for us to exchange some opinion. Uh, thanks for the conference. I will try in English. Uh, in, uh, at the speech of Mario, I wrote something here, uh, like, uh, but the spectator uh, wants to, il il to, to get illusion, to, to illusionist itself. Uh, he wants to imagine, like, like something, uh, and, and in the conference you talk about pleasure, displeasure, these three uh, niveaus of ple pleasure, when the spectator, he sees the the mechanism, but he see the image, he can imagine. And then I, I was thinking about um, the specialist in traditional theater, the spectator that knows a lot about this tradition and the pleasure is just the revelation. Everything is revealed, but the imagination is still, is still there. And um, if representation is a human faculty, I don't know, I'm not a ph philosopher, but, but we, we, we are teaching, we, we, we learn since we, we are children to, to get representation when we play, you know, when we get this kind of imagination, then maybe we can we can talk about uh, the the puppet theater in the contemporaneity. Maybe we can talk about uh, a contemporary specialist. Maybe uh, theater is too connect with this nature is a, a little bit dangerous to say, but you, uh, you understand what I, I I want to talk about the specialist. This idea of a specialist connecting with this idea of pleasure that you are talking here. No, do you don't understand? It was difficult. Sorry. Um, the idea of a specialist uh, is, for example, in Wayangi theater in mm -hmm. Java. The the spectator the the the, the spectator the, the 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 people of Bali know a lot about this mm -hmm. theater. He knows a lot. He knows the the history. He knows everything. Uh, but he he has a, a a certain specific type of pleasure in this this idea of a specialist. In the traditional theater, we have this a lot. Yesterday, I talked about in the case of Mamulengo. And, but I, I am thinking about this pleasure of this specialist that is the representation, but 
uh, another pleasure with this practice of uh, to feel representation. Sorry, in English is really difficult to me, but I, I want to I want to hear a little bit about this this pleasure that you are talking here with the idea of the spectator that is a specialist trying to connect with the contemporary contemporaneity theater mm. in puppet theater. Then. Maybe I, I would say that um, a traditional spectator of Mamulengu or, or another form is more an expert than a specialist. I, w I would prefer expert. Yeah. Why? Why? I don't know. It's just intuitive. Um, because he really appreciates. He can really say this is a good performance, this is not a good performance, or for which reason. I, I would speak of him as an yeah, it's expert. It's another pleasure, I think, maybe. Yes. That's and what I exactly. try to, to I think there are other pleasures. There are many kinds of pleasures in front of a performance. Uh, the, the pleasure of um, discovering something new and the pleasure of re seeing again and again something that you love very much. There are different pleasures. Maybe the big, the, the best specialist or the best expert in contemporary theatre is a, a child. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I just say, <clears throat> every in in every context, uh, even the spectator is not uh, an expert. Uh, the spectator has always uh, a network of references uh, and he put, on some, uh, put together these uh, references. Uh, so I don't think it's so different uh, from uh, another um, dimension, situation of other kind of uh, performances. As far as the pro process of um, communicating is concerned. It's only a, a question of degree, different level, but uh, the, uh, the principle is the same, I think. I don't know. If you... Thank you. You could add that in traditional theatres, um, the spectators the, and the artist are sharing the, the, same, um, the same codes, are mastering this, also the same codes, they are all experts of their art. And that creates a specific community. And uh, of course, if you are in front of a contemporary creation or contemporary production, you, you don't know what will happen on stage. <laughs> you have to discover it. You, you have to decipher the codes that uh, are produced and that many times are new codes or new conventions or, or, or new ways of uh, creating a, a, an image. So you, you are discovering something new. It creates a, another kind of community also between the spectators, not with the artist, of course, but can also be a pleasure. <laughs> Some more great. Um, uh, my question is, uh, I'm trying to relate what uh, Mario said about this double vision that Tillis talked about, that it's this moving, the moving of uh, looking at the object, the artistic object, and also to the object, you know, the image and the material, and dislocating this uh, from one point that you create this illusion, but you know where its illusion comes from. So this game, it's a game. It's a game uh, that he found that's the ontological base of the theater. Right, Mario, is it? 
Did I get the idea of? Yes. Uh, and I would like to see you want to, because my question for Didier and Christine is, uh, what do you think about this? In it's equal this in traditional context and the contemporary context. Do you agree with the idea of this ontological sense of this double vision in any context? So if you want to talk, some, uh, did I, I say it okay about the double vision? Uh, Am I clear? I, I think that I, I really uh, enjoyed uh, reading uh, Steve Tilley's essay on uh, this idea of double vi vision, which is the idea of Steve Tillis is really a, a great idea. It's just uh, the difference between what he says what he wrote, uh, and what we say is that, uh, well, it's not exactly a double vision, because you see something and you imagine something else. So one of these visions is uh, an inner image. Eh? <laughs> and is it an image? <clears throat> well, uh, <laughs> I would not uh, answer to that question. But yes, of course, there is a, this specific kind of perception of, um, of puppet theater, of course. But uh, are they really only two? Are they, I think that, yes, in uh, most of most of case, theater also is a kind of double vision. You see Hamlet and you see uh, the actor. <laughs> um, in contemporary puppet theatre, you see, uh, you may see a character. You, you may see also, uh, as I said, as well, you, you see a representation of a woman, a man, a child, an animal. And this representation is not exactly the idea you have of what is a woman, what is a... Uh, a child, what is uh, a man, and, and so on. I, I mean, there is, in um, puppet theater, um, there is very easily an, an allegorical uh, level of vision. Uh, you don't see only the adventure of a, of a character, you see also something happening to a, a larger category of beings, uh, men, or, or, or so on. So it's well, this allegorical level maybe is already a third vision, <laughs> you know. And you can see many, many other levels. Uh, I remember of a, of a show, I could not describe it properly now because it was really 20 years ago, but I was counting in myself and saying, well, there are five levels of vision. <laughs> because it was... A, Puppet uh, designed as uh, uh, it was as a um, cook um, as a roaster designed as a roaster was imitating uh, a diva, a soprano diva. Oh. <laughs> Double vision? No. <laughs> Triple, quadruple, <laughs> and maybe sometimes more. <laughs> yes. Also in the example we saw uh, Pan de Parti, Teatrino Giullare, with the uh, Chiquier, how do you say it? Chess, this chess board. Uh, also there, there are really mul uh, multiple visions, but uh, I want just to say uh, maybe we have to distinguish, or not we have, but it's uh, useful to distinguish, uh, where these different levels uh, are used dramaturgically. They may make part of the dramaturgy, and when they are there as uh, different elements uh, in, in the direction. So in the example we showed, I think they are all uh, dramaturgically part of the performance. Thank you. 
Uh, I have a question about, um, again, uh, traditional, in traditional puppet theater forms, you often have uh, gods, mm -hmm. uh, and nobody's seen God. Uh, so, is that a representation or a misrepresentation? <laughs> <laughs> It's up to the audience to decide. It's up to your belief. No, actually, because it is up to your belief. And uh, the performer believes, and the audience really believes. Uh, so really, it's working at multiple levels. But to break it down into misrepresent rep misrepresentations uh, works three times. Uh, what is the representation? what is the misrepresentation of the representation mm -hmm. and what is the belief in the misrepresentation <laughs> so I, I would just I, it would be interesting to know what you think uh, uh, it's very easy you, uh, every people in in the audience has a clear idea of what a good representation of this god is not really not always uh, <laughs> They are sure they have. <laughs> I think, well, it's not that because they are, these gods are not existing, that they, are not, they have no representation. They have already other representations in books. And so, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So mis misrepresentation would be between this classical representation, these iconic representations, and the representation given by the performance. Yeah, um, because I'm, I'm really um, struggling a little bit. Uh, for example, I, I, I've been having this image in my head and I don't know how to talk about it because I'm not familiar with many of the theories. Uh, but for example, uh, the way we start a Sepectom performance in Cambodia, it, be it begins with two candles, two mm -hmm. candles that represent, you know, the beginning of the universe or... Um, and of course, the biggest question was what was before, who put the light there? Mm -hmm. who, who even began the light in the first place? And uh, the puppeteers, uh, they really pretty much, be they, they function, they may not believe it, and, and that's why I think this has some relevance. They, they don't necessarily see or, or understand their, fun, uh, their identity, but they know their function as a priest. They know the function of what they are to the people without necessarily understanding their identity. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm even saying this correctly. So, so I'm really wondering about how this, does this even fit in with this, uh, this, uh, level of dialogue this this yeah is is there a way to help to understand their uh, function as a performer using this using this theory i'm sorry <laughs> it's interesting cuz we are speaking from a west point <laughs> i find this very interesting cuz uh, the fact that uh, all our references are of the West uh, culture, and uh, I find very interesting these uh, questions, but uh, I can't answer. <laughs> At least there is a kind of complexity also in traditional uh, theatres, as I, as I said, because uh, uh, there is a <laughs> in spectrum uh, above all um, of course the character is um, uh, materialized by the figure but also by the dancer who holds the figure yeah, on the dances well, with, well. with the figure <laughs> and uh, sometimes we perform before the screen uh, as I said uh, so so <laughs> You are really visible, and then there are also the voices of a singer. So there are maybe two or, or three props who can uh, 
help uh, the audience to, to, to create this uh, image, this mental image of a, of a character, even if uh, on a shadow you can have two characters or, <laughs> or more. Uh, 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 I, I think it's... Uh, I think it's important, though, because uh, I think one problem that we face is the exoticism of what we are doing. And uh, there's a lot of strength in the ideas from the West. I think, I think it helps, and we do respect it, I think, on our side. I, think. I mean, I, I just speak for m maybe myself and a few artists I know. Uh, but we, do, we are interested. We are very keen because... Uh, we want to also be able to speak about it, but I would like that dialogue to continue. Otherwise, it's always a, a lot of assumptions are made, and you know, it's just be both on your side and our side. Then, I mean, if there's a side, <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I would love to further that part. I think it's good, I think it'd be good for us, yeah. Well, we have only some minutes. Then, if you have great, first lady, okay? Then you, Mario. Well, I have just a comment to make, really. It's not a question, <coughs> because I think, uh, as it has been said in these days, that you can ask questions, but there may not be answers for them. Uh, so, I, uh, it is quite clear from your presentation today that your lens is very uh, rooted in your culture you know, Plato and Aristotle and the kind of work that you are taking reference from, which may be completely unfamiliar to people from other parts of the world. And when you try and make sense of it and find comparatives within your own cultural context, mm -hmm. you find that you do not have the same vocabulary. Of course. And you do not have um, uh, the same context. Of course, you don't. And there is uh, much more complexity because the anthropological and the social, sociological layering is still a very deep reality. And so to find your way through that is going to be a, a huge task. And that's why he says that we'd like to have a dialogue, because it's good to find the contrary ideas and see how you have uh, charted a path. But I'm not sure if we can... Um, uh, chart a similar path or come to some kind of theoretical understanding of the <laughs> I'll try to make some sense because as I'm listening to everybody say here the, the mind started working and uh, I think the thoughts are not uh, quite mature yet but I'll, I'll try to, to make to, to to get some sense out of it, of this. Uh, first of all, uh, when Didier uh, says about the, the multiple kinds of reading, it makes complete sense. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, on the other hand, I was beginning to think that when they say, uh, and I, I'm sorry if I get I, I don't know, too theoretical here, I'm really sorry. But uh, when, when Tillis is talking about the double sense, he's getting a genealogy that comes back from, uh, I don't know, I think Otto Karzik, when he said about the, the pendular vision mm -hmm. that the, uh, the audition sees. One time the puppet as a living object, and the other time the puppet as a inert thing. Uh, I guess that Tillis uh, is inspired by Djokovsky when he comes up with the idea of uh, opalization. Uh, yeah. And this opalization uh, is dear to Tillis because of the, the matter of the simultaneity of the visions. It's not as Zich was implying, that one time you see one thing, and the other time you see the other thing. You see everything at the same time. And it may apply not to 
two different kinds of state, but as a multitude of different states. Uh, when Tillis uh, implies to a double vision, uh, I guess that he is implying, uh, he's referring to a, a basic duality between living, not living, which cannot, uh, which is a different way of looking at things other than uh, the hermeneutical possibilities and the performance. And I was, I was beginning to be at peace with this thought when I listened to Anurupa <laughs> <laughs> and I listened to Terence and then I thought, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and I, I guess, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I really don't know if we're trying to, if we're trying to, to set a common ground for the, the, the perceptive dynamics of, of people. Oh. Yeah, well, that's everything I wanted to say, uh, I guess. Up to a certain level, we can do that, yeah. just up to a certain level. Yeah. Because, of course, in a traditional uh, shadow puppet uh, in um, East Asia, you, you have not only the character and the shadow of a puppet, you have also the spirit, <laughs> <laughs> the living spirit of a, uh, who is uh, inside. So, well, it's, it's another kind of presence, but we can introduce it in this, uh, in this scheme. It's just uh, there are variations um, according to different cultures. But um, is it really different? It's really different in the, in the theory. I, I think that uh, the aesthetics, uh, above all in, in India, are much more elaborated than uh, the occidental one, Western one, ones, of course. Uh, difference between Bhava and Raza. Oh, well, <laughs> we can see that really. <laughs> they are more, much more elaborated and complicated than ours. But we have to, to get rid from many, many um, centuries of um, traditional uh, discourses like uh, Plato and Aristoteles, and it's difficult to get rid of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't like to, to ask you for the other questions. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> because I think it will be good to, to go back with some... Uh, undefinished uh, reflection about our discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Christina. Thank you very much, uh, Didier. Thank you, Thank you. And just before, before the next point of our meeting, I would like to, to present you and to welcome uh, between us uh, Colin uh, Macanu, the Kerlin, Kerlin, Ke sorry, Colin Mac. It's the the name. Kerlin Macanu. He is the uh, head, the manager of the Tsandarika uh, Animation Theatre in Bucharest, and he is the president of the of the Unima uh, Romania, and uh, he is the co co-creator of this, co-collaborator, the, the main collaborator of this meeting. Thanks to him as well, we are here. Then please uh, give, uh, see him, and uh, we can applaud this man, this man presence. Thank you very much, Karim. Well. Welcome. Bienvenue. Um, okay, there is a little change in the program that we have decided. Uh, I think everybody will be happy about that. Um, we have decided that we will take the pause now, half an hour, and then uh, we will come for Miguel Villino conference, and then we will be free until tomorrow morning, because I asked uh, Philippe Choulet if we'd, he would agree that he does his conference tomorrow morning. So it means that tomorrow, for the visits, we will be one hour late, but I asked uh, Irina, and everything is okay with that. Okay? So, have a good pose. Thank you.